Hello students, today we will discuss about the ANSA cervicalis. Now this ANSA cervicalis is also known as ANSA hypoglossi. Now this short note is very commonly asked in your university exams. Now whenever you are having this word, the first thing which should be very clear in your mind that ANSA means loop and as we are reading the ANSA cervicalis that means this loop like structure present in the neck because you are dealing with the cervical region. The second name given that this loop is related with the hypoglossal nerve which is a 12th cranial nerve. So that's why it is also having the name ANSA hypoglossi. But the important thing which you have to understand that this ANSA cervicalis is a nerve loop. It is not an arterial loop, it is made up of nerves. So let's discuss this ANSA cervicalis. So whenever you are talking about the ANSA cervicalis, it is a loop of thin nerve fibers and these thin nerve fibers present in the neck. The second important thing which you have to understand that this nerve fiber loop embedded in the anterior wall of carotid sheath. Now you know that carotid sheath is a uh, part of the deep fascia of the neck where you have the tubular sheath on right and left side. And anterior wall of this tubular sheath you are having the relation with the ANSA cervicalis. And this carotid sheath encloses the internal jugular vein and common carotid artery. So you will find that this ANSA cervicalis is in relation with the anterior wall of these vessels of the neck. The important thing is that it is formed by the cervical nerve C1, C2 and C3. So what is the root value of these nerve fiber loop? Answer is C1, C2, C3. So here you can see that in this image, the loop is present here. Now this loop is known as ANSA cervicalis and as you can see that every loop is having two parts. So this is the one part and this is the second part of the loop. And this part is coming from the hypoglossal nerve. Now this is the hypoglossal nerve or the 12th cranial nerve and it looks like that it is coming from the nerve which is not actually the uh, uh, hypoglossal nerve because one nerve is having the two sets of the fiber. One is the cranial nerve fiber, second is the fiber from C1. So it is quite surprising that some students are having this confusion that when it is a cranial nerve, how the cervical nerve fibers are become the part of this uh, hypoglossal nerve. So that we'll see in the coming slide that there is a actually merging of the two nerves will occur. Clear? So now when you will talk about the function, it is going to supply the muscles which are present in the infrahyoid region. Now what is infrahyoid muscle? Now you know that this is the hyoid bone. So here you can see that this is the level of hyoid bone. Now the area above is suprahyoid, below is infrahyoid. So when you will talk about the infrahyoid muscle, here you are having this omohyoid, then you will have the sternohyoid. Then you will have the thyrohyoid and sternothyroid. So these are the four muscles which are known as infrahyoid muscle. But my dear students, the question comes about this line that this ansa cervicalis supply all the infrahyoid except thyrohyoid. Thyrohyoid means the connection between the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. So this small muscle which is known as thyrohyoid does not supply by the ansa cervicalis. So remaining three muscles that means the sternohyoid, sternothyroid and omohyoid inferior belly supplied by the ansa cervicalis. So let's discuss the formation of this loop. As I already told you that whenever you are having the loop you are having the two part of the loop. So these are known as superior and inferior root of the this loop or the ansa cervicalis. Now in this superior root, why it is known as superior? Because it arises at higher level and why the other part is known as inferior. Now here in this image you can see that this loop is arising at higher level as compared to this loop. So because this arising at higher level it is known as superior loop, this arises at comparatively lower level so it is known as inferior loop. Now inferior root. So this superior root of the ansa cervicalis comes from the C1 now. So what is the root value of superior root of the ANSA cervicalis? C1 now. And what is the uh, root value of this inferior root is C2, C3. So the superior root is arises 
from the C1 and it is at higher level, that's why it is superior. The inferior root arises from at lower level and it comes from the C2, C3. Now, <coughs> we'll talk about the superior root first. The superior root derived from the first cervical now. Now, why I am uh, uh, stress on this word? My stress on this word is because it looks like a branch of hypoglossal now when you will do the dissection. Now, when you are doing the dissection in this area, it will give a misinterpretation that the superior root is a branch of hypoglossal now. But actually, dear students, it is not a branch of hypoglossal now. It looks like the branch of hypoglossal now, but it comes from the first cervical now. So the anterior rami or the ventral division of first cervical now is forming the superior root and in the upper part the, this anterior ramus of the C1 actually enters into the sheath of hypoglossal now. Are you getting this point that here you can see that this is your now. Now which now is this? This is the 12th cranial now which is coming separately and this hypoglossal now is going towards the tongue. But what will happen that there is a common sheath. Now this is the sheath of this now. Now in this sheath, here you can see that this now is entering. Now where is the now? Now this is the now. Now this now is entering into the common sheath. Now once this cervical now, that is the ventral division of C1, enters into the sheath of this hypoglossal now, and later on when it comes out from this, it looks like that it is a part of or the branch of hypoglossal now. So this is the important thing to understand that the branches of the C1 are entering into the sheath of the hypoglossal now and later on as soon as the hypoglossal now approaches the different areas in your upper part uh, and here the branches of the C1 will leave the sheath of the hypoglossal now. So there are the two different sources one source is coming from the brain for the hypoglossal now and one source is the C1 anterior ramus. So in upper part, the C1 now fibers enter into the hypoglossal now sheath. And this is the important word which you have to understand. And then what will happen that these C1 now fibers uh, leave the hypoglossal now in four ways. What can be the four ways? First is that they may form the superior root of ansa cervicalis. So some of the C1 fibers comes out as a superior root. Some of the fibers form the meningeal branch. Some of the fibers will have nerve to thyrohyoid and nerve to geniohyoid. So my dear students, now this word again comes here. Thyrohyoid muscle. I just told you that this thyrohyoid muscle in this previous slide, that this thyrohyoid muscle does not supplied by the ansa cervicalis. But still, this is supplied by the C1 root, C1 now. But it is a direct supply, not through the loop. Clear? So this is the important thing to understand here. Now, this superior root is also known as descendants hypoglossi. Now, why you are using the word descendants hypoglossi? Because it looks like a descending branch of hypoglossal now. Clear? So as it descending branch of hypoglossal now, it runs over the internal carotid artery and common carotid artery. Now again, the word is important, it is not having any relation with external carotid. Why? Because we are saying that it is running on the anterior wall of carotid sheath and you know that carotid sheath does not include the external carotid. Carotid sheath includes the common carotid and internal carotid. So here in this diagram, if you will see, where is your carotid sheath lies. So here you can see that this is your internal carotid artery and this is your common carotid artery. So the loop is present here in this area. Clear? So you will find the loop here on this area which is the area of carotid sheath. Now if I will remove this carotid sheath here for the better understanding, you are able to see the loop. Now the loop is visible here. Now when you will see this loop, what you are able to see is that this is your hypoglossal now. Now this now is giving a branch. Now this branch is your superior root. And this root is going vertically downward. And behind this root you can see the red color artery. 
that is the internal carotid in upper part and common carotid in the lower part. So this is your superior root of ansa cervicalis which is known as descending branch of hypoglossal nerve or descendants hypoglossi. Clear? Now what is inferior root? Now as I already told you inferior root is having the lower approach that is why it is inferior in the position and this is known as descendants cervicalis. That means it is a descending branch of cervical plexus. Clear? So it, it comes directly from the cervical region. So it is descending branch of cervical plexus and it is deriving from the second and third cervical spinal nerve. So that is the important thing that it comes from C2 and C3. Now as this root descends, it winds the internal jugular vein. So the loop lies on internal jugular vein. Now here again in this image, here you can see that this is your inferior root. Now this inferior root is going downward and here this is the location posteriorly is the internal jugular vein. The cut end you can see here, this is the cut end of internal jugular vein. So the superior root, now this superior root runs on the anterior wall of the artery while the inferior root runs on the anterior aspect of the internal jugular vein. Now when you are talking about the loop, now this turn, now this turn occupy majority of the internal jugular vein. So it is written here that when you are talking about the formation of the loop, it mainly lies on the internal jugular vein. Then continue enter inferiorly and it joins with the superior root in front of the common carotid artery and internal jugular vein. So this is the area where you will have the formation of the loop and this is formed by the joining of the superior root and inferior root. So there should be no confusion that there are two part of the ansa cervicalis, superior root which looks like a descending branch of hypoglossal nerve but it is actually the fibers of the C1 which has been entered into the sheath of the hypoglossal nerve and as soon as the hypoglossal nerve will reach at this point, the fibers of the C1 come out from the sheath of hypoglossal nerve and they run vertically downward in front of the artery and that is known as superior root of uh, ansa cervicalis. While the inferior root is a direct branch of the cervical plexus, that's why it is known as descendants cervicalis and the inferior root runs on the carotid sheath towards the venous side, that means on the anterior aspect of the internal jugular vein and then in the lower part they will meet both and they will form the loop of ansa cervicalis. So now what is the distribution? Now when we will talk about the distribution, the superior root supply the superior belly of omohyoid. The loop of ansa cervical is supplied by the sternohyoid and sternothyroid while the inferior belly supply the inferior belly of omohyoid. So here you have seen that this is all are the infrahyoid muscle except thyrohyoid. The thyrohyoid also supplied by the C1 but it will have a separate branch. Now here in this diagram you can see that this is the C1 now. Clear? And this C1 now here it is giving this superior root of ansa cervicalis but the C1 nerve is also going further anteriorly in the sheath of hypoglossal nerve where it is coming out to supply this thyrohyoid muscle. So here the important thing is that this thyrohyoid muscle is also receiving the supply of the C1 root but not from this loop, clear? So the nerve supply root value is here also the C1, here also the C1. But the source is different, here it is in the form of the loop while here you have the direct branch from the C1. So that's why it is said that thyrohyoid muscle, though it is supplied by the C1 now, but it is not supplied by the loop, it comes from the direct branch. While the loop supplied the omohyoid, then sternohyoid and sternothyroid muscle. So here in this image, you can again appreciate the formation, so you have to, again I am telling you that this is the hypoglossal now and this hypoglossal now is having the fibers of the C1 and these fibers of the C1 will enter into the sheath and then they will leave the nerve at different places. One of the way is that this is the superior root and in another way it is giving the branch to the thyrohyoid muscle. While there is an inferior root and this inferior root running on the anterior wall of the carotid sheath 
particularly on the internal jugular vein side and then they will join together to form the loop of ansa cervicalis so now at the end of this class it is very clear what is the difference between the superior root and inferior root what is the location of the ansa cervicalis and which are the muscles supplied by ansa cervicalis so this is all for the session thank you